If you would like to follow along on my KOTOR 2 playthrough, please subscribe to the Drunken Druid down below. That's me. Hello, friends. Welcome to episode one of KOTOR 2. I'm so excited to dive into this game together. Welcome into the Drunken Druid Tavern. My name is Ray, and I'm the proprietor and head bard here at the tavern. Welcome. Let's play. Lucas Arts! Yay! <laughs> oh, it's been so long. I miss KOTOR. 2004, you guys. Oh man, 2004. It's been so long. Okay, let's do this. I don't remember, you know, the only thing I remember from playing a little bit of this game a couple years ago is having a lot of trouble finding my way off of the first planet. I don't know. I just remember it taking a really long time, so hopefully <laughs> I don't actually remember how to do it. I don't remember anything. Ugh. My memory's terrible. Does anyone else just have like a hard time remembering details? Okay. I'm gonna go Guardian. I just like whacking things with my stick. What can I say? What can I say? Okay, who are you? Who are you? Oh, this was, this was our portrait last time. I kind of want to keep it. When I first played this game, this is our portrait. <gasps> She's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, attributes, here we go. The attributes of your character apply bonuses or penalties to everything from combat to skill checks to force powers. Check each attribute to see what aspects of gameplay it can affect. Okay, I think we want strength. Can we just max it out? Yeah, high strength adds modifiers to melee damage and chance to hit, which is important for characters that use close combat weapons. Dex. Agility and reflexes. A high dex adds modifiers to ranged attack rolls and increases a character's defense, making them harder to hit. Um, seems pretty good too. I don't think- oh, wisdom is for force powers, isn't it? I don't know if we want to be charismatic. Maybe we shouldn't have a minus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is this too like maxed out for strength? <laughs> I just hit my problems. Honestly? Yeah, I'm kind of feeling that. No, that's probably not very good. We got, okay, let's have a little bit more balance. Oh gosh. Okay, okay, I think, well, no, I'm just gonna go for 18 strength. What the heck? I don't care if it doesn't make sense or isn't perfect. I just wanna hit things and for them to feel my wrath. What should this character's name be? I don't wanna reuse a name again, but I feel like I'm feeling like Randy. Cause remember, Randy was our Dragon Age Inquisition, for any of you who are in the tavern when I played that on Twitch. And she hit her problems as well. Each of your character's skills has a number associated with it. This is the skill rank, and determines how good the character is with that skill. When using a skill to perform an action, the rank is compared against a difficulty check number. For example, to open a lock with DC 15, take your skill rank and security plus wisdom modifier plus D20. If the total is 15 or greater, the lock is opened. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, we're not good at charisma. We're not good at any of these. We're okay at dexterity. <sighs> Maybe we should actually be somewhat good at computer use. Disable turrets. That seems good. Opening 
devices. No, we just open them with our lightsaber. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh, I see. This is a class skill, so I don't. I can actually use one point per. Okay, okay, okay. This makes sense. Awareness, spot objects or enemies hidden by stealth. That seems good. Maybe we should just spread them a bit. Here's what recommended is. All in treat injury! Huh! That's interesting. Nah, we're just gonna spread them out. Okay, feats. Some feats allow you to use special items like heavy armor. Other feats modify saving throws and skill checks during the game. And some feats are used during combat. Check the description for details on a specific feat. You have been granting the following feats at this level. Okay, we're proficient with light and medium armor. Critical strike, flurry, power attack, power blast, rapid shot, sniper shot. Okay, all these are weapon proficiencies and Jedi things. Okay. Okay. Deflect energy-based blaster bolts. Oh, I do love that. Okay, so these are locked at the moment. It's level four, I see. Okay, let's see here. Improved conditioning. Oh, I can't get that, sorry. I thought that was open. Never mind. Lightsaber. Okay, when are we gonna get a lightsaber though? That's the thing. Plus one bonus to all saving throws. What would re recommended be? Toughness? One extra vitality point every time they level up. Mmm. That is nice. Isn't that a, also a D&D &D feat? I kind of want to get two weapon fighting. I don't think I want to go for dueling. Dueling? Mm. Dueling is kind of cool though. Maybe I should try something different than I did in KOTOR 1. Characters that focus on using single one-handed weapons in battle gain plus one to attack and plus one to defense due to the efficiency of this form of combat. Applies to both ranged and melee weapons, and also applies when using unarmed combat. And then you just increase that bonus every time. Versus with dual or two weapon fighting, it's just like making it not as much of a <laughs> like a negative. <laughs> Reduces the attack penalty. <laughs> I don't want to have a worse attack. Okay, let's do dueling. Oh, wait, no. Remove toughness. Oh no! <laughs> toughness seems good too. Maybe we'll get that in the future. Okay. Dueling, yes. Oh no, the hardest part, we have to choose a name. <laughs> Tindra Turs! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Wait, these random names might be kind of fun. Craymane. <laughs> Cynodon! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can we be Cinnabon? <laughs> Yes! All right. Cinnabon, Jedi Guardian Extraordinaire. Let's go. Wait, what is this sixth thing? What? Did I click the wrong thing? Okay, we're in! The Sith Lords. 
It is a perilous time for the galaxy. A brutal civil war has all but destroyed the Jedi Order, leaving the ailing Republic on the verge of collapse. Amid the turmoil, the evil Sith have spread across the galaxy, hunting down and destroying the remaining Jedi Knights. Of course they are. Narrowly escaping a deadly Sith ambush, the last known Jedi clings to life aboard a battered freighter near the ravaged world of Paragus. Is that us? The last Jedi? I've heard that one before. <clears throat> I don't know what happened. I, I didn't click play, I clicked the number six and it just launched into this. So I think we're we're starting the game. <laughs> I was worried I was gonna miss a step. I was like, wait, five, six, play. <laughs> well, we'll find out soon, friends. Maybe I unlocked a special version of the game. Ooh, the Ebon Hawk. Wait, why isn't the Ebon Hawk with Revan and crew? Oh, I guess we didn't import our character, so. Primary power. Oh my gosh! Okay, I remember this part. It's coming back. That's not good. That's very not good. Okay, we're hurling through an asteroid field. The Ebon Hawk is adrift in space after a terrible battle. Most of its crew are dead or dying. You lie in the medical room in critical condition. You won't survive long without medical attention. The hyperdrive is damaged. Main power must be restored in order to bring the engines online and dock with the nearby Paragus mining station for much needed repairs. Your fate and that of the Ebon Hawk depend upon T3M4, T3! a lone astromech droid. Return to this location at any time to skip the prologue. Continue! Press W A S D to move T three M four. Then turn. Press caps lock to toggle first person prelook. Hold control. <gasps> to look about. You can do first person look. That's cool. The active quest screen includes important information related to your ongoing adventures. Refer to this journal for hints throughout the game. The Ebon Hawk is heavily damaged and adrift in a dangerous asteroid field. Find the hyperdrive and fix it to restore primary power so that you can dock with the Paragus mining station for repairs. Cinnabon! Heal Cinnabon! Bonus mission? How is that a bonus mission? We must heal Cinnabon! Ebon Hawk communications console damaged, minimal functionality, primary functions offline. In order to use this console, you will need a computer spike. The number of computer spikes you have is listed at the bottom window. Oh, we have zero. I'm guessing that there's a spike in here. So is this basically just like a tutorial? You have sliced into the Ebon Hawk's cockpit computer, bypassing the main console functions. Heck yeah. This is good. I need a reminder. I haven't played KOTOR in years, even though I just finished uploading the videos to YouTube. It has been years since I actually played it. Oh my gosh! We're back! Your security skill is too low to- Bash! When in doubt. Bash! That's what I always say. Hello. Oh! Broken item! Computer spike! 
Sometimes bashing or blowing open a container will break some of the items in the container. But you can use even broken items. They can be turned into useful components at a workbench. Well, that kind of uh, kills my uh, strategy of not having security and just bashing things open. Oh dear. You have sliced into the Ebonhawk security system for the port aft section of the ship, which includes the engine room, utility lift, and the garage. Um. Hull breach and garage section. Blast doors locked down. Engine room door inoperable. Okay. The garages are working. That's good. Oh! Close outer garage door. Okay. Close outer garage door. Open inner garage door. I don't know if that was helpful at all. Ooh, garage access. To access it, you will need two droids. Switch into solo mode and move the first droid to stand in the hall between the inner and outer garage doors. Then switch to the second droid and move to the security terminal in the main hold. With the second droid, use the security terminal to close the outer garage door and open the inner garage door. Then switch back to the first droid and you should be able to proceed into the garage. How do I get another droid? There must be a one that I can activate somewhere. Broken droid! Oh, I guess it was just parts. This is the cargo hold. Talking to other characters is much like using the computer console in the cockpit. Scroll through your responses. Okay, I know that. Note that some responses may influence how other characters react to you. So choose carefully. Furthermore, that is the, certain the skills, thing. powers, and attributes may modify what choices you have or how successful you are with those choices. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, I can have a cracker, excuse me. CFD is malfunctioning. You can fix him by using a part. Luckily, you have already found one. Perfect! If you repair 3 CFD, he can join your party and assist you in repairing the ship. Success! You have fixed 3 CFD. Now he will join your party. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. Happy to help. They're having a whole conversation here that I don't understand. But I think it was good. 3 CFD is now a member of your party. To change which party member you control, click on their portrait or press tab. Later, when you have more companions... Oh! <gasps> what is this? Sensor droids emerge from this box when you opened it. These droids will make for excellent target practice. Mm. Use the weapon from this container to attack the droids. You can equip a I weapon. never really use T3 in KOTOR 1. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I never really used T3. To open the equip screen, click Enemy sighted! Game pauses when you sight an enemy and the selection reticle will show up in red. <clears throat> you can use the mouse to select other hostile targets. This auto pause option can be disabled on the options screen. No, I like it. I like it. Where's my left click the selected enemy once to enter combat mode. This will lock the camera on your selected target. Left clicking the target again causes your character to perform the default action and attack each round. Your chances of hitting a target are controlled by your statistics and behind the scenes combat rules. Combat is not affected by your aim, your character's movements, or the movements of your target. Only left click once to engage. You will automatically attack your target each round. You do not have to left click it again until you select a new target. Okay. While engaged in combat, you can use the target and action menus to activate items, feats, and force powers each round. Otherwise, your character will automatically perform their default attack each round. Target 
by pressing Q or D. Or left click on the object you want to target. To attack an enemy, let the keyboard work beating the sensor droids. To continue combat training, what can we say? Again, and more sensor droids will appear. I think I remember now. Thank you, helpful tutorial. The container is too difficult to open. You'll need to use a security tunneler to help open the lock. Oh! Look in the cylinder next to this one to find security tunnelers. If you encounter a difficult lock on a container or door, you can use a security tunneler on it to improve your chance of opening the lock. Use the security tunneler to open the high security cylinder nearby. Oh! <gasps> that is cool! I wonder... If it just increases our skill? Improves the user's ability to bypass security measures, creating electronic interference in the locking mechanisms. It can only be used if you possess the security skill. Okay. But it doesn't tell me like how much it adds to the skill. That's interesting. It just makes this it better. Mm. Search the ship to find a key to this locker. Okay. This is the main hole. We've been here before. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. We have to go this rescue people. <gasps> oh! This old woman appears to be dead. There is a key card on the body that looks like it opens a locker somewhere. Thank you. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. I definitely remember that lady. This is the cargo hold. Okay, now we've got this key. Does it just automatically? Yeah. Okay, we'll more stuff. Found to open the locker. The impact armor from this locker can be equipped on the equip screen. Excellent. There we go. Defense bonus three. Amazing. Oh, oops. Click the wrong thing. To access the area beyond this door, you will have to use solo mode. Default V. Click the solo mode button at the bottom right area of the screen. Okay. Solo mode. Well, you're way back here, buddy. Okay. Oh, whoops, I have to close the inner garage door. Then open the outer garage door. There's T3! Okay. This is the garage. Oh, whoops. Now, close, close outer garage door. Open inner garage door. Ah, <gasps> we did it. Okay, you've accessed the garage and the garage is a workbench. You should use the workbench to break down extra objects in your inventory into components. Use the components to create a repair kit. That's awesome. This is a workbench. With the workbench, you can break down objects in your inventory into components. You can then use the components to create repair kits, weapons, armor, and upgrades. Because of the damage to the Ebon Hawk, this workbench has limited functionality. You can still use it to create a repair kit. What's fine of me? Repair yourself. Use the workbench to break down the items you found into components. Then use the components to create a repair kit. This like AI on the ship is very helpful. Does it know everything? Who is it? Oh my goodness. Was this a thing in Kotor 1 that I just completely missed? <laughs> I don't remember this at all. Okay. Um, uh, repair kit. Let's 
So, oh. Oh. Oh, it takes different skills to create these. That's so interesting. Component cost. Total components, one. What about armor? Okay, nothing yet. Poor Cinnabon. Repair kit! Yay! Oh, wow. Oh, this is bad. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. This is the, st this, this is the Starboard Dormitory. When the Ebon Hawk has landed, this is where you will go to... This is the garage. Sparking wires. The sparking wires connect to the trigger mechanism for the inner and outer garage doors. You can open and close the doors from here. Um, I probably shouldn't do anything. My other buddy. Oops, I keep accidentally clicking spacebar to like interact with objects because that's what we do in Mass Effect. <laughs> and I just finished Mass Effect. Um, okay. Close inner garage door. And open outer garage door. That's perfect. I'm not sure if I like need to do this tutorial, but this lift will take you to the outer hull of the Ebon Hawk, where you will find many parts and mines to use for accessing and repairing the perfect. hyperdrive. Perfect. Use the lift controls to go up. I feel like I should like save my character. Oh, <gasps> there she is. This is the medical room. You are in critical condition. You will need a med pack to be stabilized. Of course. Okay. Where would one find a med pack? I wonder. Probably. Oh, hey! This is the main hold. Okay, I should probably go up, huh? This is the utility lift. Okay, turn off solo mode. Yay! Come here, bud. What's your name again? Three C F D. Cool. You can use this lift to take you to the outside of the Ebon Hawk. Let's go. Oh my gosh, is that Paragus? Looks a little bit molten. Oh no! Poor Ebon Hawk! It's been through the ringer. Okay. Don't forget to explore the other side of the Evan Hawk. This is the the bubbles ahead indicate mines that you've detected uh -huh. automatically with your awareness skill. Some mines require higher awareness to detect. Approach mines carefully. They will blow up and damage you if you get too close. You can use your demolition skill to either disable or recover these mines. Recovering mines requires a higher demolition skill than disabling them, but you get to keep the mine, which you can then use to set as a trap for enemies or break down into components. Oh, you can break them down into components! That is awesome. Let's try. Go, T3. All right. I really didn't use mines to get enemies in, when I was playing KOTOR 1, but maybe we should try that. I feel like that requires a lot of skill. Missile ...to blow open the engine room door inside the Ebon Hawk. This will give you access to the hyperdrive. After you plant a mine, back away quickly so that you do not take damage. Okay, good to know. Odd lasers. Hearts! This is one of the Ebon Hawk's quad laser turrets. They are damaged, but you can scavenge some parts from it to use in repairing the Ebon Hawk. Hopefully, I've got enough parts, eh? This is the port side of the Ebon Hawk. This is the starboard side of the Ebon Hawk. 
This open hatch has some parts that will be useful for getting main. This busted engine port has some needed parts for the Evan Hawks hyperdrive. Take the yeah, parts I, here. I don't know how much I should listen to this tutorial voice. Hopefully this all won't be in a test later. These exposed wires control the door to the starboard dormitory. The door is currently sealed, mm. but you can override it from here. Mm. Cool, let's do it. Success. The door is opened. You can now access the starboard dormitory through the garage. Okay, we should have done this before going to the garage, unfortunately, but alas. What can you do with the drunken D3? What do you do with the drunken droid? Empty? What do we do with a drunken droid early in the morning? You can use this lift to take you back inside the Evan Hawk. Okay, I know that. Thank you. Lady's kind of a know-it-all, isn't she? This is... This is the engine room. Bye-bye! Did it explode? Yeah! This is the engine room. The port engine is shut down, but appears intact. Fixing the hyperdrive will allow you to restore power to the port engine and bring primary power online. The hyperdrive is suffering badly. You won't be able to make the jump to light speed until it is fully repaired. And you do not have the needed equipment here on the Ebon Hawk. Bummer. However, you should be able to rig the hyperdrive to restore primary power and bring the port engine online. This will allow you to dock with the Paragus mining station for full repairs. Success! The hyperdrive is online. Nice. Primary power is restored. Only one step remains. Return to the galaxy map in the cockpit and travel to Paragus. Okay, we should probably stabilize our character. And maybe, the, oh, maybe there's a med pack out in the dormitory. This is the main hold. Okay, 3C, is that your name? Oops, just a, a bit. Of... Sorry, I, I was getting ahead of myself there. Um. Oh, hang on. This is the main oh, that's empty. I thought I forgot to open that chest. But no. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. To the garage, I think. This is the cargo hold. Maybe not. This is the engine room. The garage to access the area beyond this oh door. okay this is the garage door okay hello what oh that door was already open okay it's starting to make sense now I got all turned around. Please tell me there's a med pack in here. <sighs> Parts. Okay, that's also good. Droid flamethrower. This is one of the special weapons the droids can use to equip it. Open the. Okay. Hmm. Oh, it goes here. Okay, okay. Amazing. Shock arm, flamethrower, blaster. Okay, maybe droids are actually amazing. <laughs> maybe I was really missing out by not using them more in the last game. When the Ebon Hawk has landed, 
This is where you will go. This blast door. Okay. This is the garage. Maybe I could make a med kit here. Hmm. I guess not. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I don't see any med kits here, but maybe eventually we'll be able to create med kits. That'd be cool. To access the area beyond the Open after a garage door. Okay. Nailed it. That was good. That was good to practice solo mode because this is the cargo hold. I really just haven't. I don't know what I'm doing anymore, basically. Okay, nothing in there. Watch there be a med pack just like this right next to my character. Hold. Oh, like in there? Oh, maybe in this there's a med pack. In the medical room. Oh! You have found med packs. You can use one to stabilize the condition of the human lying on the bed. That's not just any human. That's Cinnabon wearing her red converse and looking really awesome. The med pack can stabilize your condition. Success. You are stabilized. To recover fully, you will require the medical facilities at the Paragus Mining Station. But you are not in any danger of dying from your wounds right now. That's good. Okay, I think we did all the stuff. Let's go to the galaxy map. think it's here. Oh yeah. This is the cockpit. The cockpit. You can now plot a course to the Paragus mining station. To dock with Paragus, left click on the Paragus planet to select it, and then left click on the travel button. Oh my gosh! <gasps> All right, I'm gonna end this tutorial episode here. This is just a little teaser, a little taster. We made our character. We finished the tutorial, got a little refresher on KOTOR stuff. And in the next episode, we will arrive on Paragus and hopefully find our way off of Paragus in not a lot of time. <laughs> All right, y'all, thank you for being here at the Tavern. Until next time, take care.